What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Certified, and welcome to the channel. Yo, today, I got something crazy in store for y'all. So, for those of you that watched my last video, I told y'all in that video that any modification that I'm gonna do from that video on, I'm gonna keep y'all posted. So, today is my first modification since that video. All right, y'all, so for today's modification, it's actually a modification that I have not seen a lot of people do. Granted, there's a lot of videos on YouTube that you can search on this item, but in person, I've seen this item maybe once or twice at car meets and I think one time at a car show that I went to, but I'm surprised a lot of people haven't done this modification. I don't know if it's because of the price point of the piece or or I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I just figured that, you know, since I needed to replace this part of my car anyways, why not upgrade? So today is my installation of the killer glass radiator tube. All right, y'all, so I already unpacked this item. This item came in a couple of days ago. So everything you see right here on the table is not, the or does not come with the kit. So I'm just gonna show y'all the stuff that comes with the kit and then a couple of pieces that will help me out during the install. So. It's the packaging that it came in. It came in a nice little bubble wrap packaging to protect it. Obviously, well, I'm not going to say obviously because there's some pieces that get shipped in that don't have instruction manuals. Even if it's a, a, a fairly simple install, generally I feel like it should come with instruction manuals because you never know the skill level of the person installing the part. Um, here's a couple of stickers for y'all. I don't really care for stickers too much, but... Here's some stickers for people that like stickers. Um, and then here's the famous killer glass tube. Um, a lot of people ask me all the time, like, is this real glass? And I couldn't really answer that question until I actually got it in hand. So, yep, it's real glass and it actually has a pretty decent amount of weight. So I would think the only way to really destroy this is to put a hammer to it or to obviously slam it down hard enough on the ground. So, but I think under the hood of your car with heat and everything and being the fact that it is made for your radiator um, holes, it should be able to withstand heat and the temperatures that your engine produces underneath the hood of your car. So these are the heat shrink tubings that come with the killer glass holes. Uh, these actually get installed around the tube itself, and then you cut the section out of your factory radiator hose, slide it over, and then you heat shrink the tube around it. Um, you definitely want to do this off the car, um, just because you won't really have enough room inside the engine bay to get your heat gun ar fully around each section of your hose to make sure that the heat shrink is fully seated um, to where you don't have any leaks the minute you start your car up. Um, and then of course the LEDs, these are replaceable. Um, it looks cheap, but when it's fully installed, you can't actually see the LED on the top portion. I don't know if you can see it on the instruction manual. It installs around the tube itself and then this is pretty much all you see once it's installed. Probably trim off the uh, zip tie that it comes with, but and probably wrap the wiring underneath the hose itself so it looks pretty clean. Me personally, I don't like the fact that they only offer solid colors. Um, I wish there it was like an RGB function and to um, wire it to like a Bluetooth controller to where you can choose the color that you want. But uh, this kit only comes with a solid color. I think they offer red, blue, and green, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure they offer one or two more colors. If you want to, just check out their website, um, and they tell you what colors they offer for there, too. But I think I ordered blue, either blue or red. We'll find out once we install it, but uh, I definitely... I definitely wish they offered a, a, a version that you can control and change colors on. But the good thing is, it seems like it's something that I can add on later because it looks like a simple piece that you can just take out and put an RGBW on. Um, the other stuff, that that's pretty much it that you see on the table uh, that came with the kit. 
Uh, the only other thing that I purchased separately was the hose. The hose on my car is actually pretty worn out. So I needed to replace the radiator hose anyways, which was, I believe, 20 bucks from Advanced Auto. So even though the instructions tell you to replace the radiator hose anyways and use a brand new radiator hose when you're installing this, but for some of the newer model vehicles, I really don't think it's necessary to change out and buy a brand new radiator hose. Um, so I bought this separate. I also purchased uh, hose clamps. These actually will help out with the, the clamps that are around the radiator hose. These actually hold it open. I don't know if I can even try to hold the camera. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. So yeah, I clamp it down and it actually locks into place with this little piece right here. So you can hold it down, slide this over the actual clamp and as it clamps down, you can move the radiator hose clamp out. So it just makes your job a lot easier. Um, I do have a Ziploc bag to catch any excess radiator coolant that may flow out. So I'm not making a mess on the ground or in the engine, which I'm pretty sure I'm going to make anyways, but I'm trying to minimize the amount of, of mess that I make while I'm doing this. And then of course, a heat gun. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can use a blow dryer, but for me, blow dryers don't ever get hot enough on certain jobs. So a heat gun is definitely a lifesaver when it comes to that. So that's pretty much everything that came with it. So let's get everything installed. All right, y'all, so we out here, about to get this thing started. So my little handy dandy tool that I told y'all about, that's pretty much how it works. <clears throat> this little piece on here. There we go, use the air. <clears throat> Put this on here. All you gotta do is just clamp it down and that's how you open it. However, as you saw, the minute I open that up, coolant started flowing out. So let's try to save some coolant. Placing this bag under here. Now the car has not been running all day, so the coolant is not hot, so don't worry, I'm not gonna burn myself. <clears throat> and I'm gonna need a flathead. All right, so we got the flathead now, which should help me out with this. Too bad, not too bad. Let's give it a second for it to drain out. <clears throat> now it's not gonna empty out your entire coolant, but it's good to try to catch most of it for one, so you don't make a mess. Uh, number two, you can actually reuse that coolant and put it back into your reservoir. I do have extra coolant just in case I need to top it off, um, but we're going to try to catch most of it, so I don't have to do that. Now we're going to take off the next clamp. This thing comes in handy, y'all. You don't have to get crazy with the pliers or channel locks that a lot of people like to use. Just slide this on there, boom. Alright, so as y'all can see, you definitely want to get a bag or some kind of drip pan underneath your vehicle while doing this because right now this is my second bag this is how much coolant we lost so far 
So imagine, imagine not having one of those or not having some kind of drip pan underneath, how much of a mess you'll make. So even though y'all can see, I'm still making a mess, but it's way better than what it would have been. And I'm even dripping out underneath the car a little bit. So imagine how much more it would have been with the rest of that stuff in the bag. All right, so get this last one off. I'm pretty sure this one's gonna make a mess as well. Yep. All right, I'm gonna let that drain out for a bit and come back to y'all. So for the new process, you wanna kinda just position the new one on here. Don't worry about putting the clamps on because you're, you're not gonna be using this right now, so. trim it i have like this little saw blade that i had laying around you can use anything that you want to try to trim it but i like this little saw blade it helps out so it tells you in the instruction manual to trim off an inch of excess over the actual pipe so you have room to install it so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to measure look i got some more fluid I'm actually going to measure how much I need just based on looking at it. So I need to cut right here. Yep. It's not the most perfect cut. That little blade that I had didn't actually quite work for me. It was kind of a pain in the ass. I'm sure if I actually had it in the machine, it would do it, but it helped me mark it where I needed to cut it. And then I just used a really sharp kitchen knife to cut through it. However, as you can see, it's not the most perfect cut, but that will be covered up with the shrink tubing once the piece is on there. So I would say put the rough edge against the tube so you can hide it with the shrink tubing and put the straight edge against the uh, thermostat housing. So. That's for the top piece. It'll look just like so. And <clears throat> this is why they tell you to get some excess. I'm gonna do some adjustments cut the piece you see how far off it is so i gotta cut a good i'm gonna say inch off the end of this probably right here and then slide it on and then uh position it accordingly so as soon as i get done cutting i'll show y'all the final result ran into a small little issue nothing ever goes smooth when you're working on cars so <laughs> ran into a small little issue but we were able to make it work. I actually had to reuse the factory hose. The factory hose wasn't as bad as I thought, um, but I reused the factory hose, which worked out. So as you can see, this is not the final product, but this is what it will look like. Obviously it will look a lot better and cleaner than this once it's done, but this is what it will look like when it is done. So just to give y'all a preview. So I'm gonna go in and Heat shrink the tubing around it to seal everything back up and we're gonna get the clamps installed. All right, y'all, so I put the heat shrink tubing on. I don't think I needed to do a tutorial on how to use a heat gun and heat shrink. However, if y'all want a tutorial, let me know in the comments below and I'll gladly make one for y'all. But everything's on there. It's pretty much ready to install, so. Bottom one. Pretty much till it can't go no more. Mm. And the 
top. Trying to make sure there's no tension on the hose itself. If you use any type of twisting motion to put on the top or vice versa if you did the top first. And then you just put on the um, hose clamps. <clears throat> This is where these come in handy. So y'all can see I put it on on the bottom instead of putting it up top to make it easier for me. And I can just maneuver it around. All done. So the biggest thing now is to make sure you fill your cooling reservoir back up, which we're gonna do and then bleed the uh, coolant system. So to bleed the system, just to give you a quick tutorial, there's a bleeder screw right here. Um, it is a hex size, it's a quarter hex, quarter inch um, hex bolt that goes in here. You wanna make sure that it doesn't have any play because you don't wanna strip that screw out. So once you um, fill the coolant reservoir up, all the fluid that I put in there ended up topping this reservoir out, so don't let that scare y'all. Um, you can burp the system by kind of squeezing the uh, hose a little bit um, just to get some, uh, some of the air out that's already in there. However, once you open this bleeder screw, you can open it up. And as you open it up, you start to see fluid fl flow out. That means your system is bled. If it's no fluid coming out, you'll hear it gargling like gloop, 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 gloop. And you'll see the fluid, fluid drop down in your reservoir. Add some more fluid in there until it starts coming out of here. As soon as it starts coming out, tighten this back up. Start the car up, monitor your temperatures. If it starts spiking, shut the car off, add more um, coolant if necessary, and bleed your system some more until your temperatures are uh, normalized. And that's pretty much it. We started it up. See the coolant flowing through. The LEDs are not yet installed. I gotta get a two position switch because I don't want the LEDs to stay on consistently. But this is what she looks like right now. We don't have any leaks from what it looks like. So once I get the LEDs installed, I'm gonna give y'all some night shots and that will wrap up this video. So before I give you guys a night shot, I finally got the LEDs installed. I ended up using my own zip ties because the zip ties that it came with were extremely thin and I just didn't feel like it would be safe and I don't want it to end up popping on me for whatever reason whether it's due to heat stress or whatnot and the um, and the um, wire to get dropped down into the belt area and cause cause some issues so yeah so I use the extra zip tie back here to hide the wiring these front two zip ties are for the leds they're mounted underneath as such all the wiring is tucked in this area so when somebody walks up into the engine bay you don't really see nothing now these leds do not come with its own power source it doesn't come with like a bluetooth controller or anything like that it gets wired directly into your battery so i ended up buying a two position switch which i mounted right here there's a little convenient bracket sticking out right here so i ended up mounting it right there to where at night when i pop the hood i can turn on the um, the lights eventually i'm going to upgrade those leds to de uh, not demonized but um rgbw leds that those are the same LEDs that come in demon eyes as well. But I do want it to be to where I can actually control it via Bluetooth and actually change the colors. So, but like I said, in the beginning, I couldn't remember if I had red or blue. So it is red. So I'm gonna start it up for you guys. Started it up for you guys just to show you guys that the temps are normal. Up to operating temperatures. 
pretty sure y'all just heard the fans go off. Look at the temp outside, y'all. It's only noon. Well, close to 1 o'clock and it's 95 degrees out already. Alright, so... There's what she looks like. Out the light. All right, y'all. So that wraps up the installation of my killer glass tube. As y'all can see, the installation was pretty straightforward. I mean, super easy. It took me about an hour and a half to do, uh, and that's with the complication that I ran into. And just a quick overview of what happened was I cut a little too much off the tube. I didn't mismeasure. I just cut a little too much uh, from where I thought I had cut, put the cut line. And yeah, it, the insta when I dry fitted in the engine bay before I used the heat shrink to lock everything down permanently, um, it just was a little too tight for my liking. So I had to reuse my old uh, hose. So the old hose wasn't as worn as I thought. It actually worked out pretty good. So I'm happy with the results. And yeah it's 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 done it's done so but that wraps up this video i hope y'all like this video if y'all do hit that like button if this is your first time on this channel i appreciate you guys uh i hope you guys hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so y'all won't miss any upcoming videos that i got coming up for y'all so but before we leave i gotta give y'all some certified drip shots at night so I can only imagine what it will look like at night, especially since it's already looking good during the daytime. So until then, I hope y'all have a good day.